Hey folks, uh, just the other Dave here. Uh, we're in my jungle camo. We got a project for you from scratch. Coronavirus AR-15. For starters, uh, you know, I wanted to do this, I guess, for a while. I just never had an excuse. I saw a lot of people were doing uh, similar things. Of course, if you've uh, been looking into this, been going to the gun stores, it's all, uh, everything is sold out. The big part of the build, uh, I guess, is one, not being able to go to the store and try the things I wanted to try. Two, a lot of things being sold out. I kind of went with what was available sometimes when it wasn't my first choice uh, or it was you know a couple things maybe were on sale um, just wanted to lay this all out here all the parts show you guys that you know I really did go I, I bought everything my paid for it myself I'm not sponsored despite the ridiculous number of stickers that I received I, I wanted to just remind myself of who I got it from to tell you what everything was you know how was their their customer service how was their shipping times all that stuff you you kind of want to know it's uh, not a not a review on any one store by any means i tried to to spread the love as much as possible all right so uh let's start where we start right here in the middle this is a lower receiver if this was a firearm then this would be the the legal firearm this is the bit that would get uh serialized or what have you now Obviously, if you got the uh, eagle eyes, you've already seen. This guy isn't milled out. It's, uh, it's not a complete lower, so technically not a firearm today. Um, so that means there's no uh, there's nowhere to put a trigger, nowhere to put any mechanisms uh, to make the thing go. So uh, that was a gift from my buddy Jeff. Uh, it was an 80% arms uh, billet uh, out of Santa Ana, California. Wish I could tell you more about it, but I, I guess... Uh, 80% lower is what you make of it, right? So, upper receiver. So, I could have done something really unique. I, I thought about it. I was looking at the, the traditional uh, right side charging, older military rifles and AKs and things like that. Um, but then I kind of decided I'd rather just go with the standard AR. Like, why? One, one half of me said, well, why buy it? Why have an AR if it's not, this, it's not an AR, you know, if it's something different? Um, and the other half said, well, you know, it's, it's the standard, it makes it easy to find parts, it makes it easier to, you know, everything will be more compatible, hopefully, maybe. Um, so, I got this uh, VLTOR, that's spelled, uh, I guess they pronounce it ULTOR, spelled with a V. Ordered it from them, non-bolt assist version if you go looking. I bought this one because it was a little bit... Uh, uh, heavier, a bit uh, thicker, but it's still a forged upper. Um, it's got the uh, ejection port cover and everything. Um, it was, you know, the price was right, and it was lightish weight, but not super lightweight. Just, you know, good all around uh, starting point, I guess. Um, onward to, towards the business end here, we got a barrel. Uh, this one is made by Criterion. It's the uh, American Defense Manufacturing ADM profile. Uh, it means they, uh, you know, it's a contract manufacturer for somebody else. The reason I got it is I was looking at the pencil profiles for uh, lighter weight, less mass. So you're swinging around. Uh, all the shooting sports people seem to go for that sort of thing. And American Defense Manufacturing had a nitride uh, finished version. So it doesn't have quite the, as rough a texture. Um, it's not chrome lined, I believe. In fact, it's black nitride on the inside. Uh, this is the locking lugs for the uh, the bolt. That's this guy here. It's got the matching set that goes in there and turns, twists to, to lock in place. The gas uh, port area is three quarters of an inch. Just a traditional, I think, AR size. That was also kind of a plus for this one because it meant I may have more options in terms of gas blocks. Of course. You're talking about an AR, so there's so many options. I think that's also kind of uh, personal preference. And uh, this one's also a 1 and 8 twist 223 wild uh, caliber, which means that it's a more different 5.56. Five, it's a little uh, more, I guess, sportier for, for accuracy. It's the 223 uh, chamber. Don't quote me on that. 223 chamber, but for 5.56 five, pressure. The geometry is a little different if you want to go read the drawings to be my guest. I did it and still don't remember what the difference was. So to go with that you need, of course, 
a gas block and I got uh, superlative arms. Good, uh, good quality. Fits under fits under my handguard, which was an important factor as I had this handguard in mind already. And it's adjustable. Got to get a tool here to adjust it. But what's the gas block do? Well, this goes over the barrel. Line up with this hole on it. It lets the gas go through this tube. So gas tube goes through the gas block. That sends the gas to the front of the bolt. This little piece here would be on the other end when it's all assembled. And that drives the bolt backwards to eject your brass and load the next one as the handguard. I got a Coda Evolution. Same idea as the pencil barrel. Uh, save the weight out here so that it's lighter. You know, the, that moment of inertia is uh, more, uh, more effort required when the weight is out further to support it, to turn it, all that. So. Um, and towards the end here, we got a uh, Surefire War Comp. I looked and did a lot of research on all, all this stuff, but this uh, War Comp is uh, it's a compensator, so it lets gas out these ports to kind of reduce recoil, and also a flash hider. So these prongs uh, allow hot burning gases mixed with the air, and some of that burns behind the prongs, and it, so it kind of shades that flash somewhat of course it's still got slots in it so it can't be a hundred percent but uh you know there, there was a lot of different options some were better compensators some were better flash hiders uh this one is also a suppressor mount if i ever decide to go that route um, but when the price was all meh, pretty much the same for some of the options i was looking at uh, this one was just kind of a jack of all trades uh, so that seemed like a safe bet you know like i can always decide that i like something else better in the future so I wanted to get a good all-arounder because this is my first time doing this. Uh, so I should have led with that, by the way. I've never built an AR before. If I can do it, well, anybody can do it. So also on the front end here for my uh, handguard, which has no built-in rail, I had to buy some Picatinny rails. I got these from Arisaka uh, because they were lower profile. And I was calculating, and I don't know if I got my math right because the things don't line up quite the way I thought. The, uh, nothing is really centered where you would think it would be centered, but these uh, should come a little closer uh, to being aligned with the rail on top of the receiver. I don't think it'll be perfect, uh, but I'm not trying to mount anything across the handguard and receiver at the same time. This is so I can mount uh, sights on my handguard, and I, uh, I got two sizes. I got a short one and a longer one just in case they use... Um, so, so I don't know how long my sights are going to be. Well, I, I do now. When I bought them, I didn't know which sights I was going to go with. They use the M-Lock system. So these uh, T-slot nut type deal slide down in the grooves for the handguard. And then when you start to tighten screws on the top side, these rotate 90 degrees. They should stop there and uh, tighten up. But we'll, we'll see how that goes when we get to the part of, part of the next video. I'll start assembling the upper. Um, so along with those parts, uh, of course, you got to have all the, the triggers and mechanisms that go inside your lower. I got these uh, from WMD. Uh, they're nickel, nickel boron, so if you can see that kind of matte gray finish, uh, it's supposed to be easier to clean, a little bit less friction. Uh, uh, more importantly, it didn't break the bank. So this does include a trigger. It doesn't have a fancy trigger kit. But I figured if I didn't start uh, down at the bottom, you know, I wouldn't appreciate it if I had a nice trigger. So, uh, and uh, to go with that, I got a, a castle nut that will go on the other end, also WMD nickel boron to match, you know, the low, low budget bling. So, I um, uh, also got a uh, BCM uh, Gunfighter Mod 2 grip. It's, I mean, I never held it in my hand before I received it, right? So, it, it seems a pretty good size, but the, the reason I picked this one is because it's modular. So, uh, the mod, there's a mod 0, mod 1, mod 2, and mod 3, and what's interchangeable on them is a little different. This one I think was the most modular, so it has this uh, trigger guard piece can swap out. One has a little bit of support right here to keep your finger away from the trigger guard if, if it fits your gun and fits your style, you know. The other one is just kind of smooth, and the back strap comes off. Uh, this is the, the largest one came on it, um, so it kind of you can resize that to fit your hand and I figured in the future once I know which of these I prefer the best I can go compare the dimensions of the one that I've got assemble the way I want it 
with other grips and say, yeah, you know what, that one's pretty close to the one that I, the way I like it, and so I'll, I'll try this one out, you know, so uh, instead of buying one that's not adjustable at all, and I either like it or I don't, and I gotta buy another one if I don't like it, hopefully this one will get me somewhere. Uh, it also has a bit of storage, probably not as much as a, as a non-modular thing, because it's gotta have some room for these plastic slide dovetails and things to fit, um, but but it's got this kind of rubber end cap and uh, it's hollow. Uh, this where the uh, this mounting screw goes. Uh, you know, it doesn't really it doesn't look like much now. But if I uh, pick this up, stick it together, so now now you know you're starting to see things come together. Maybe it gets a little little familiar as you add parts. I might be a stormtrooper with just those two pieces. But, um, but yeah, so that is the BCM Gunfighter Mod Two. If you want the super adjustable one, then you can go compare the others to get kind of a, they're basically fixed versions of one or the other one of these arrangements. Um, so uh, moving backwards, uh, of course I got, um, I'll start here, uh, you need an end plate, it goes on the back of your receiver, your lower here. Uh, this one happens to be a phase five, it's an angled design, it has a so it has a quick disconnect, so you can attach a strap, but the strap will come off at an angle, so hopefully kind of point it away from your stock. Uh, it's supposed to be a little more ergonomic. It's supposed to be because I, of course, never had my hands on it, never had one assembled to play with. So uh, I went with that because I had to have something. And uh, uh, we'll go into uh, who I bought these from in a minute, but yeah, this uh, Phase 5 angled quick disconnect and the WMD castle nut. Go, go on here on the back over, of course, the buffer tube. So we're going to have to talk about this buffer as a system here. Um, I got the VL Tour uh, Phase 5, or oh, A5, Phase 5 is this guy, A5 uh, buffer. So a standard carbine buffer has three weights inside it with some little rubber shims to keep them separated, and, a, and that's a, a partly a... It's like a dead blow hammer as your buffer moves, so, so your bolt does its thing, gun fires, compresses this guy back on the spring that's down in the buffer tube, and then this has got to come forward to push the bolt forward. So this weight is adjustable, even a standard one. You can change the number of weights, so the, the steel for tungsten weights on the inside, um, to change how fast this thing is going to accelerate, decelerate, and how hard it's going to close the bolt. So while it's adjustable, the A5 buffer uses a bit longer stroke buffer tube, and it has one more, it has four weights on the inside, so it's a little heavier at the lightest and, and significantly heavier if you throw in four tungsten weights at the heaviest, um, and the longer travel is supposed to help reduce recoil. Um, so. Again, it was one of those things like, I can't tell you, I can't do the math, you know, and tell you exactly how good this is or how it compares, but everyone else seemed to think it was pretty good. Uh, it seemed to be a, a popular uh, alternative, uh, so it was kind of like, yeah, maybe I bought the upgrade right out the gate when I should have tried the regular one first, but, um, but I got it now. So um, so along with that, uh, this one, of course, is the from VL Tour. They came up with the A5 system. However, they were sold out of their... Uh, kits. So I got uh, from Sons of Liberty Gunworks a Spring Co. Green rifle linked spring. Uh, the, the A5 system uses a rifle spring instead of a carbine spring. However, the buffer tube is smaller than a rifle, so it's got more preload on the spring when it's in the in the buffer tube. Uh, I think they just call it the green one because they stick some green paint on the end to ID them. But uh, this buffer tube is actually not VL Tour. This is a BCM, a Bravo company. Um, that's because VLTOR sold out of the tubes. Uh, you know, so like I said, what was available at the time is a little different. So I'm sure the length is the same, but the uh, the spacing of the uh, indents for adjusting your stock are different. Uh, on that note, um, you you don't see a stock on the table. Uh, so I ordered my stock from Midway probably two weeks ago, um, and they took probably a week before they even bothered to ship it, um, and then, uh, 
and then at that point, uh, I, I don't know if there's a shipping delay or this is just, just normal for the coronavirus or the, you know, the male guys have to have their fun playing hacky sack or whatever. Um, so, yeah, the, uh, the stock hasn't showed up yet and I mostly want to blame, one, blame that on Midway. You know, I'm sure they'll say, well, it's tough times, but everybody else was pretty good. Everybody else was significantly faster getting things out the door. Uh, primary arms, wicked fast. Uh, Spice Tack, I got the, the Radiant Raptor charging handle. You've probably never heard of them. I, again, you know, tried to spread the love, did some searching, heard, heard good things, and, and also they had one in, uh, you know, the thing I wanted in stock, right? That was important. So, uh, so yeah, I got that from them, and they were lightning fast. Uh, so, uh, and also, I think, uh, you know, correct me if somebody else has sent me the Smarties, you know, everything kind of got mixed together on the table, but I'm pretty sure Spice Tack sent me some candy, which I definitely needed, don't I look like the type? So, uh, <clears throat> so of course, everybody sent me a whole bunch of stickers, primary arms, so I got a couple of those, because they were fasting when I forgot some of these things, I went and sent them another order, uh, I bought these uh, GI mags, and, you know, the aluminum ones, and a Lancer mag from BCM also, and of course, their uh, gunfighter grip, um, that just about covers it. I guess the only thing I could go into detail. Okay, yeah, 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 we'll try it. Uh, Radiant Raptor charging handle. Um, so this guy is, uh, oh, again, it was, you know, it's an upgrade from the standard, super popular. The advantage of this one, of course, is it's is ambidextrous. It has this locking mechanism. I don't know if these are geared together or how they operate. Um, I got the Raptor LT, uh, it was in stock and it was 20 bucks cheaper, I got uh, it has a plastic, uh, metal core plastic on the outside, uh, over molded style handles, um, so again, ambidextrous, in stock, on sale, usual, uh, not actually on sale, just cheaper, uh, of course I did, I did blow my load on the, uh, the Brownells bolt over here, so, uh, yeah, it's Brownells, right? So the, the price was right. These guys were on sale, and uh, this happened to be their titanium bolt carrier. So you can't tell this is a black uh, diamond-like carbon finish, but um, but this piece is titanium. Now, um, this is probably steel. I'd have to look it up. The bolt for sure is steel. It almost has to be. The titanium, whatever people say, is simply not as strong. Uh, it's stronger for a certain weight of material, but when you have a fixed volume... You can't uh, you can't control the weight, so um, so you're you're lighter, you're not as strong. Now, of course, it's the same geometry as the standard uh, M16 profile bolt carrier, so that hopefully makes up for a little bit. You know, it's not totally disposable, and I think anyway, the bolt is usually the part that goes, which is still steel, whatever ordnance grade they decided on. I think it's mill spec. So. Um, so yeah, that uh, Brownells Titanium Bulk Carrier Group, uh, <coughs> because it was on sale. Um, yeah, so I think that, that pretty much covers it. Uh, don't have the stock, and I don't have the sights here to show you. Um, I'm uh, we'll follow up with another video on assembling the upper, I think will be next. Uh, once I do the upper, I got to, of course, work on the, the lower, then, the, then we'll follow the video on the lower parts kit. Uh, and we'll talk about the sights when we get to assembling that. We'll talk about the stock when we get to this end. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, you know, subscribe, send me hate mail, you know, leave a comment below, whatever you got to do, um, and I'll talk to you guys in a minute.